Thank you for joining us for the Ministry of the Word at Redeemed Christian Fellowship in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope the Ministry of the Word will be a blessing to you. Good evening, RCA family. Thank you for joining me for our midweek service. I am so blessed to be here with you as we dive into the Word. If you would like to open your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, we're going to refer to that a couple times as we go through some other scripture. Um, tonight's teaching is titled, Overcoming the Poverty Mentality. Um, this is a teaching from the Laws of Increase, Volume 2, if you have this manual and you'd like to follow along. Um, the Laws of Increase by our beloved pastor, Walter J. Martinez. Doctor, pastor, blessed man of God. Um, and I am on page 40, so I'll give you a second to find that if you would like to follow along. We're going to be talking about overcoming the poverty mentality. And let's pray. God, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Father, that as we dive into your word, Father, that the truths and the insights and the revelation that flow, God, that they, they will change us from the inside out. And we thank you, Father, as we walk in your word, as we're doers of your word, that we'll be blessed because of it. And we give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to talk about overcoming the poverty mentality. And it's important to understand that the way you think needs to be paid attention to. Um, the, devil isn't, the devil isn't out to get attention, but he is out to get an advantage. And what he's trying to do is get us messed up in our thinking because if he can mess us up in our thinking, then we're going to start messing up in our saying. And when we mess up in our saying, we're going to end up, uh, James tells us that our tongue is like a rudder. And he describes our life like a ship. And if he can get us talking and saying the wrong things and saying things like, I'm catching a cold. I don't have enough money. I don't, I don't know where the money's going to come from. If he, if he gets us saying, I don't, there's more month than there is money. Uh, I owe, I owe, so off to work. I go. If, if, we can, if the devil can get us thinking wrong, he'll get us speaking wrong. And if we're speaking wrong, then our life is going to take a course. It's going to take a direction that's wrong. It's, that's not that perfect plan that we've been talking about that God desires for us to live and walk in. So it's so important that we check our mentality, that we, 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 we have hedges, we have uh, parameters up where we're not going to allow thinking to cross lines that are contradic contradicting the word. It's so important that we are renewing our mind to the word of God, that we're, we're getting into the word and seeing God's character, seeing how has, he, how has he taken care of men in the past, how has he blessed men of the past, that when we're looking at Abraham, when we're looking at Solomon, when we're looking at David, when we're looking at um, into the New Testament with Paul's teachings, who is God? How do they describe his character? Is he a good provider or is he one who leaves his children in lack? And when we can get in and see who God is, we can build our faith upon what the word of God says. And when our faith is built up, that's going to change. It's going to renew our mind to the way that God operates, how he does things, how he cares for us, how he's a good provider, how he's El Shaddai, the God of more than enough, how he's Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And it starts to build up our faith to where the circumstances, when they're trying to scream at us, hey, there's a need, there's a need, there's a need. We know on the inside of us, well, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and learn Christ Jesus. So I don't need to worry about this. So um, the poverty mentality, overcoming the poverty mentality, the I can't or the I'm not sure attitude is not good because it's birthed out of lack instead of wisdom and waiting on the Lord for direction or for provision. This attitude of lack produces uncertainty and affects your confidence. It is the essence of the poverty mentality. So this attitude of lack. Lack just basically means there's not enough. There's an there's a insufficiency. And think about we serve the God of all sufficiency. That El Shaddai means the all-sufficient one. He is a God of more than enough. So when we have a poverty mentality, when we're living our life, thinking that there's just, there's not enough, there's not enough. What are we going to do? There's not enough. Well, we're not looking in the right direction. We're looking at ourselves, trying to figure out how we're going to make things happen instead of looking at God who is able to make 
all grace abound toward you. So when we base our decisions on lack because of what we can't see, we quit looking for the harvest. And then our needs are not met because we fail to tap into what we have worked so hard to achieve. Faith allows you to see the harvest to meet the need. Hebrews 11.1, 1, it says, faith is the substance. Faith is the substance. It's the evidence of things not seen. We don't need to see in the natural to know the word of God is true. We, we don't in the very people, people, you know, they say like, well, I don't, I don't, I, I can't believe that way. Well, you believe in heaven. Yeah, I believe in heaven. You can't see heaven. So what gives you the foundation to believe in something you don't see? That's all we're doing when we're talking about finances. Finances are very simply a need. And God said he would provide all our need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You don't need to see God. You don't need to see how he's moving. You don't need to see the, the operation and the functioning in the spirit realm to know that in the natural, God's word's going to come to pass. All of my need will be provided according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus, not in, in and of myself or of my own accord. Faith allows you to see that the harvest is there to meet the need. Faith looks at things that are not seen as certain. Faith, Paul said this, he said, while we look not at the things that are seen, but we look at the things that are not seen because the things that are seen are temporary. Temporary means subject to change. So if you're in a place in life where you're getting hit with need, there's lack. You're like, we don't have it. Like there, all these bills are hitting us and we don't have it. Well, look, we're not looking at the things that are seen. Those are seen things. We're looking at the things that are not seen. We're looking at God. We're looking at him as our provider. We're looking at the Holy Ghost who leads us and guides us and gives us God ideas, God divine ideas. He puts us in places where men can be a blessing to us. He puts us in places where we can receive promotions. We can receive pay raises and bonuses and better job offers, better job opportunities. If we learn to follow the Holy Ghost, he can get us where we need to be, when we need to be there to make sure that everything that God desires to prosper us in is just laid out before us and we can walk in it. It's walking into that plan. Faith allows us to see that. We don't look at the things that are seen as truth. We look at them as temporary. So when a need hits you, you thank God that God provides all of your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And then boom, another bill hits you and you go, I thank God that he provides all my need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And then boom, another need hits you. Don't get pressured. Don't get, see, Sophie agrees with me. She's saying amen. Don't get pressured by the need. Let the need cause you to praise God. Let the need cause you not to look at the need, but to look to God. To look to God, your source. Look to God, your provider. Your job is not your source. Your employer is not your source. Whether you get a paycheck this week or you don't get a paycheck this week, that shouldn't change or, or rattle your faith. You should go, I know that God is my source. I know that God's my provider. You know, your job is really like, like people say, yeah, Dave, you can say that because you have a good paying job. Well, I have a lot of weeks where we were going through years and years where there'd be weeks where we wouldn't get a paycheck. So enjoy that for a good paying job. How good, it's not a rely, your employer is not reliable, not like God is. Your, your employer isn't designed to be your source in your provision. God is your source in your provision. Your job, you work for a seed. You work for a seed. That when you get your paycheck, that's an opportunity to go so into the kingdom of God to produce a harvest, to get the grace and the favor, all of the miraculous power and ability of God working for you. God having favor with God, having favor with man. That's, that's the purpose of your job. Your job is just seed in your hand that you can then go out and increase. Don't look at your job as though it's, it's some some it's just a source it's just a uh, uh it's just a not the source but it's just a lane it's just an avenue it's just a, a way that god a channel it's a channel that god can flow through but there are so many other ways there are so many other opportunities there are so many other avenues that god can move through if we'll believe him to be our provider 
Lack is a major hindrance when it comes to our economic success. Our sowing, our ability to advance the kingdom of God, it takes finances. So why do we talk about finances? Well, because it takes finances to advance the kingdom of God. Why do you talk about healing all the time? Well, because if you're sick and you die, then you can't do the plan of God for your life. Why do you talk about the kingdom of God? Well, because there's nothing that's more of a priority in our life than advancing the kingdom of God. Why do we talk about these things? Because they matter in advancing the kingdom of God. If, if our world was run with cotton candy, then we would talk about cotton candy, but it's run by finances. It's run by money. So that's why we talk about money. Now, now people get hung up on money. So that's the other reason we talk about money is because we want to we wanna diminish the 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 talents that money and finances take into people's minds where they're worried and they're concerned and they're consumed with how am i going to get money how am i going to get money how am i going to get money stop trying to get money and just let the grace the favor the miraculous power of god bring the finances to you just let him be the provider let him be the source the poverty mentality begins to make decisions so when, when we're ruled by the poverty mentality, we begin to make decisions based upon the lack instead of based upon promised provision. That's so good. So you know you can do a, a, a heart check. You can do a mind check. You can do a priority check. You can know when you're starting to get off in your thinking because you're going to start looking at finances as, well, I can't give this because if I give this, then I can't pay that bill. So you can, you can tell when you start making decisions based upon the poverty mentality because you're basing it on lack. If I give this, then I don't have. That's lack. If I do this and I put money over here, then I won't have the money to take care of that thing or to go do that fun thing. See, that's lack because you're starting to look at when I give this, I won't have. Instead of looking at it as when I sow my seed, harvest comes back to me, it multiplies, it increases, and I'll have more than enough to do whatever I want to do, right? When you, when you make those decisions based on lack, instead of the promised provision, that is the poverty mentality. So uh, when our decisions are based on lack, it takes faith, it takes wisdom, and it takes the Holy Ghost to break free from this mentality in order to see the harvest. So pastor gives those three, three steps, you know, when you're, when, you're, when you're stuck in this mentality of lack. And you can sense this come on you. You can sense fear come on you. You can sense worry and concern come on you that ah, I, I'm not going to have enough, that we're going we're gonna to be walking right into lack. When you sense that coming on you, faith. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So get in the word of God concerning your finances. Wisdom. Wisdom is applied knowledge. Wisdom is, is just simply applying what you know. So what do you know concerning finances? Your tithe, your seed, your, your, your mouth, your confession, your uh, love walk, your, uh, the work of your hands, getting up off the couch, going to, going, putting your hands to the plow. Like what do you know? Do what you know. Wisdom is applying the knowledge that you know. That's step two. And then number three, the Holy Ghost. There's a supernatural flow. There's a supernatural uh, power that's available to cause men, to cause favor, to cause people to do things, and they don't know why they're doing things, but you just are walking in tremendous favor, and you're benefiting because of it. The Holy Ghost will give you design, uh, divine ideas. He'll give you divine answers. He'll give you divine uh, uh, knowledge. He'll put you in places where you just shine. And people are like, I don't know what it is about them, but we're going to do business with them. We're going to hire that person. We're going to promote that person. We need to move them from this position over here to this position over here. Give them a pay raise because we need them. We don't want to lose them. The Holy Ghost can give you divine ideas way above your pay grade, way above your education level, way above your, your background and your experience. Because the Holy <coughs> Ghost, he sees the end from the beginning. He has perfect knowledge. He has perfect understanding. When you're at your job, like Debbie was sharing, when you're at your job, don't ever say, I don't know what to do here. I don't know what to do in this situation. Don't go to your head. Go to your heart. Go to your spirit. Because the Holy Ghost, he will equip you 
to do the job. He will equip you with the answers. And she gave that example where she'd sit in her desk and go, I don't know what to do here. But then she would look inward and the Holy Ghost would give her the insight, the instruction. Where was that? That was divine knowledge coming to her in that situation. Don't ever, don't ever, don't ever say, don't ever say things that limit the Holy Ghost, that limit the spiritual aid, the, the, the angels that are moving and working. Don't ever say things that you can't do something, that you don't know how, that you don't limit them with your mouth. Say, I have the answer. I have the knowledge. I know how to do this. I, I have divine authority. I have divine assistance moving behind me to make me look good. And let the Holy Ghost make you look good. Let heaven move. Let the supernatural flow through your life. And when people are like, how did you know that? Now you have a perfect opportunity to share the gospel with them. Recognizing the poverty mentality is extremely important. It is easily detected because it operates through the fear of lack. Lack brings fear. Fear causes you to say all sorts of weird things that you shouldn't be saying. Fear tells off on itself. You can feel fear coming on you. You can sense then when fear breaks off of you. When you get into the word, when you start to build up your faith, you can sense, just like you can feel that sense of fear coming on you, you can sense when that breaks off of you. God hasn't given you the spirit of fear. So if fear is trying to come on you, you need to replace fear with love. You need to replace fear with a sound mind. And you need to replace fear with power. You are invincible when it comes to walk in this life because you have power backing you. You, With a sound mind, there's nothing that can get in to cause you to start thinking weird. You're just thinking the word. You're thinking correctly. You're thinking accurately according to what the word of God says. And love... Love is love love is love love perfects everything. Love always wins. There's there's no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear. Love, power, sound mind. You're fully equipped for every situation that you'd ever walk in. It doesn't matter whether you are living in abundance or not, the poverty mentality will still affect you. Uh, this is so important. Um, I, I was I was uh, reminded, you all know I love Christmas. It is the most wonderful time of the year. And if, if you watch uh, the Christmas, is it the Christmas Carol with uh, Scrooge, with Ebenezer Scrooge, where he's sitting in his, he's sitting in his accounting office and he has uh, Cratchit there and Cratchit's freezing cold and his hands, he can't write with his hands because he's so cold. And he's looking over at the lump of coals wanting to feed the fire, but the coals are like locked up, lock and key, and he can't get to it. Even though Scrooge had a tremendous amount of wealth, he still had that poverty mentality. He lived a life in lack, even though he had a tremendous amount of substance. And just think about the, the if he would just throw some coals on the fire and let Cratchit warm up a little bit, he, Cratchit could be more productive. So instead of trying to limit the resource and trying not to spend more money on coal, feed the fire, get better productivity, and he would replace that money that he spent on coal. Do you see how the poverty mentality thinks so backwards? It's so counterproductive to what reality is. When we talk about seed time and harvest, think about how backwards it is. This is what Ecclesiastes, uh, Ecclesiastes 11 says, he that regardeth the wind won't sow, and he that, he that regardeth the clouds won't reap. Just think, think about that. Like when you start to look at the circumstances to then make the decision, well, I, I, I'm not going to sow because, the, because they're saying, hey, recession's coming. So we're, we're just not going to sow. No, when there's opposition coming against you, that's the, the prime time to step out and get seed in the ground. Because if, if the circumstances are trying to come against you, you need supernatural power. You need supernatural help working in your finances. So when bad reports come in, that's not the time to back up. That's the time to push forward. A farmer doesn't look at his fields and go, well, I don't know if these fields will produce this year. I mean, they did produce last year, but who knows if this seed will work? No, they have confidence. They go out, they put the seed in the ground, and then they wait. But they know harvest is coming. 
listen, get your seed in the ground and then have the confidence to know harvest is coming. And then don't not reap because of some wind. Don't not reap because of, of some some bad reports that come in. You're like, well, maybe we lost our seed. No, you didn't lose your seed. The harvest is out there ready to be harvested in. How do you harvest in, in the natural? How do you get physical supply into your hands? How do you get material possessions into your hands? You reap them in. How do you reap them in? You call them in with your mouth. You call them in with your mouth. Your mouth is the sickle. So when it's time to call in the harvest, the harvest has to come in. Material, I, I love how Dr. Fran, he used to hold up, uh, you know, he'd hold up like a hundred dollar bill and he'd say, what's on there? And you'd see the president's face and the president has an ear. And he goes, look at that, money has an ear. Money is listening. Call in the funds that are owed to you. Call in the harvest that you have already waiting for you out in the fields. Call that in from a, from a supernatural standpoint. When you give, your giving comes up to God as a memorial before him, as a memorial before him. This is in uh, Philippians 4. It talks about how it comes up as a memorial, as a fragrance before him, and it stands up as a memorial. That gives you harvest that gives you finances to be able to call in when in the future. So you call in the money that's owed to you. You call in the divine ideas that bring increase. You call in the pay raises. You're due. You're due. Your harvest is in the field. It's time. It's, it's okay. I'm giving you permission to increase. It's time to increase. Just call in the harvest that's already owed to you because it's standing out in the field. It would be idiotic for a farmer to look at his fields and the harvest is ready and he goes down to the cafe and he says eh, I, 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 don't, I don't know how to bring in that harvest every other farmer in the cafe would be like bro here's your keys to your combine go bring in the harvest listen here's the keys to your combine call in the harvest call in the finances that are owed to you and don't speak lack don't speak against or contrary to the harvest coming in. In 2 Corinthians 9, uh, I told you to turn there. You can have the seed in your hand. We talked about uh, the last, uh, I think during the podcast, we talked about that God gives seed to the sower. And God, will, what you purpose in your heart to give, God is the one who actually brings that seed into your hand. Now, you can have the seed, but then be afraid to release what God has already impressed in your heart to sow. This will stop the cycle of prosperity in your life. This will stop the increase. When you purpose in your heart and mouth to give, that money comes in. Now that seed's in your hand. If you get afraid, if you let the, the fear of lack come in and prevent you from sowing your seed, you will cancel out, annihilate your harvest. Second Corinthians 9 Paul actually sent, we see in verse 1 through 5, which we don't read this very often. We usually skip down to where he talks about you give generously, you reap generously, and, and God is able to provide all your, uh, God is able to, uh, God is able to uh, make all grace abound towards you in every favor and earthly blessing that you would have more than enough to require no need or support. But in the verses one through five, Paul actually says, hey, I'm sending you brothers ahead of me to assure that you'll be ready to give what was promised you. Now, how offensive would that be to tell the church that today? Hey, I'm sending people ahead and they're gonna make sure that you're actually gonna give financially what you committed to give. People be in an uproar. They're like, don't talk to me about my finances. Don't talk to me about my giving. That's private. I'm not going to let my right hand know what my left hand's going to do. Well, look, Paul, Paul said, I'm sending brothers ahead to make sure that, to make up a bounty, to make sure that, that, you're, provi that you're actually going to sow what you committed to sow. That's so important. When you let the poverty mentality come in, you will let that fear cancel out your action, putting seed in the ground. The reason people do not sow, even after they have given the direction, been given the direction, is the poverty mentality. This is fear of lack, where one's life, one views their life through lack as never having enough or the fear of not having enough. 
The poverty mentality will affect how you sow, it will affect how you receive, and it will affect how you live. Some give in a big way, and then something unexpected comes up. This then, by definition, becomes a need. They figure they can't meet the need because there's not enough. But God is bigger than any need. Philippians 4.19, it says that my God shall provide all of my need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Now that was promised to the church of Macedonia because they were giving. Because they, they gave that and that, that, that offering came up as an odor, as a sweet smell to God. So notice the promise that my God shall supply all your need came because of the action, because of their faith, because of the seed that was sown. Instead of believing God, that he is more than enough, Christians will settle and they will allow the need to be left unmet because of the fear of lack. When you make the decision to let a need go unmet, you're no longer looking to receive the finances for that need. This is so important. Instead, wait on the Lord while keeping your faith active. God will supply all your need. Don't, don't ever face a need and hide your head in the sand. If you get a, uh, something that comes in the mail and you don't have the money to pay it, get on the phone and call them. Don't ever face something and, and allow fear to rise up in your heart because there, you cannot operate in faith effectively if you're going to shut yourself down because of fear. Make a phone call. Call the people. Be like, look, I don't have it. What can we set up? Make a phone call. Believe God for favor. Believe God. We had a $104,000 medical bill. $104,000 medical bill. Made a phone call to the two people that, we had, that, that mainly owned it. They cut that bill in half. In two phone calls, we saved $52,000. In two phone calls. We didn't hide. I would have hid. Back in the past, I'd hide. And that got me in all sorts of problems. Make a phone call. Do something. Step out by faith. And do it. Don't be rude. Do it. Believe in God for favor. Be pleasant. Be nice. You know, be a Christian. But believe God. I like this. When pastor says, don't let a need go unmet. When a need rises up, tackle that need. Approach that thing with faith, with confidence. Get yourself built up. Don't go in there. Don't go in there all beat up and talking weird. Go in there saying, hey, I know we have this obligation. I don't have the money right now in my hand this second. What can we set up? What can we work out? What can we do? You'll probably shock them because everybody else is hiding. You're the, probably the only person that called in that day. Figure out, don't ever face a need with fear in your heart. Face the need knowing, hey, my God shall supply. What is it that we need to believe God for? Make the phone call, find out, and then go to God and say, hey, hey God, here's the need. You got mail. You take care of this, God, because I know that you're faithful. I know that you're the provider. I'm going to wrap up here. Seek God, wait on him, and be patient for the harvest. You may have to wait, but don't abandon what you need to sustain yourself in every area of life. Do not give in to the fear of lack. I hope this was an encouragement to you. Don't live life in fear. Live life in faith. Don't look at finances as something that, that is too big for you or is a problem or something that you can never get ahead of. No, you can get ahead. You can get far ahead. You can get way far ahead of the financial need that's in your life because you serve El Shaddai, the God of more than enough. God is more than able. If he could bring out the, the, the Israelites from the Egyptians with back pay and they could come out uh, uh, borrowing all of their gold and their jewelry and they could come out fully supplied not a feeble one among them if God could do that for them he can do that for you every day so don't drop your faith concerning finances challenge those needs look those needs in the face and say I'm not afraid of you my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus you need to get your faith built up grab one of these manuals I believe they're in stock. There's uh, volume one, there's volume two, Laws of Increase, and the Prosperity Manual. And I hope this was a blessing to you. Look forward to seeing you Sunday morning. Thank you for joining us today. If the ministry of the Word has been a blessing to you, 
please consider contributing to the work of the ministry at www.redeemedcf.breezechms.com forward slash give forward slash online. You can also text to give by texting the amount you would like to give to 602-962-3848. If you have a testimony of how the ministry of the Word has been a blessing to you, please send us a message on one of our social media platforms. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for your continued support of the work here at Redeemed Christian Fellowship.